interviewing, what people want versus what, you know, the, the, the establishment wants to get out there. How mm-hmm. do you manage your writers? Like, how do you keep them creative, but also, I guess, have them stick to the integrity of what it is to wow. be a writer? Man, oh man, when, when you see everyone that's now, you know, in the space, you, you recognize everyone is able to ask questions and be a journalist, like yourself. Like what you're doing right now, that's what you are. But you have a certain kind of respect for it where you, where you do your research and you're adding certain elements to it. That's what that is. Some people, they just want to know, all right, what's the drama? That's very different in, in a journalism state and they don't even know your background. They just want to know like what the drama is, post that and that's it. You know, so that's where the, you know, in, in our urban space, that's where that whole term gets construed and all bent out of shape. As far as managing my writers and, and knowing what their capabilities are, what I tend to do is I tend to lean towards the people that bring really good ideas or pitches to the table. You can tell a piece is going to be kind of dope by the pitch, the way that the pitch is, is made. And what a pitch is, it's basically me saying, hey, Sean, I have an idea about a story. Here's the details. Here's what I think we should talk about. Here's the theme. Here's some of the people that we could reach out to. I think it will be dope to bring it out during this time because it'll be timely because of this. That's your pitch. And if someone could make their pitch funny, um, if, they, if their pitch can make you feel like, oh, man, this is, this is going to be a tearjerker, you know who to work with with that. Then you get the piece. Now the real work goes down. They, they, they've written it. They, they went and got their second sources. They're putting their quotes in. They're getting the research and copy editing. Now you get to go in and start seeing line by line. I don't know if we should say it like this because you say something similar here. Let's take this out. Bring this here. It's the construct of the building. You want your building to have a strong foundation. You want it to look fly as it goes up. And you want it to be sturdy enough and sustainable enough with within the confines of the building that's how I, I structure pieces in my head so when people read them they have a full experience great really great <laughs> i, 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 I want to stick to to management styles mm-hmm. and and you being able to help the next generation for a, a, a second right yeah you have alluded um, in this conversation several times about working alongside Diddy at Hook.com, which I'm sure so many people don't remember. But nah, you, so you have that experience working with him. You have that experience working hands-on with Ellie, I mean, excuse me, with, with Russell Simmons. You Definitely. have had great managers yourself. Yep. If, can, can I just pull and extract some of the things maybe you got from uh, 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 Russell Simmons and from mm-hmm. a Diddy and from any other manager that helped you become the manager you are today? Oh, no question. I've learned from all of them. I've learned from people that aren't even as big name as those guys. I would say during my Double um, XL first, first run, Reginald Dennis, who put together Double XL with, with, his, with his homies from The Source when they came over, he was, he was so detail-oriented about the stories of people and the themes. He wanted to go deep, deep, deep. What else? His thing would be, what else? What else? What's the other side of this, though? What's the other side of that, though? Wait a minute. Who would, weren't they connected? It would be like these little minutia parts of, of stories and hip-hop uh, folklore and stuff like that. He wanted to drill down into all of that. And I learned that from him. I learned that if you do those kind of steps, you're going to unearth a really dope story. Um, when we got over to hook.com, there were so many different people that were involved. Like Puff would, would have these meetings over at Bad Boy and it, everyone would be at the table and people are just throwing out ideas. But he was looking at who idea connected with his understanding. And if he didn't understand it, he wanted you to break it down some more. Break that, what that mean? What that mean? What that mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was my experience with him. Um, Keith Klinscales from Vibe. What I saw that he was able to do, 
as publisher, he was able to take um, what what hip hop is and and what Andre Harrell that that level of executive. We're gonna take this culture and explode it. We're gonna take it to the highest of heights. We're gonna take it to Cannes. We're gonna take it to St. Bart's. We're gonna take it to these places where we're not supposed to be, but we're gonna expand and extract and put our flavor out there. So he was just like doing, oh, when you think about Bob Music Seminar in 96 and 97, they were doing it at the Waldorf Astoria. They wasn't doing it at, you know, random hip hop nightclub or, or the the regular, you know, spot in one of these hotels at the Waldorf Astoria, five star. You know what I mean? We're gonna take it there, and it was about the elevation back then. I've learned so much from that. I'm Even so from- happy you mentioned Keith Clink Scales because yeah, man. what he did at Vibe and what he showed this culture could be like what could be done from, yeah. from a journalistic and, and and integrity point of view. Really, not just focusing on the music, but focusing on the culture as a whole. Yeah, I'm so happy you mentioned him. Yo, man, he he was just even to this day. We still have our conversations. Um, he always throws up the fact that I was a young kid. Like I used to go sit in his office and mess with him as an intern at Vibe. Man, I think about them times, and now I have like these real dope business calls with him. Um, is is it's amazing. I, I would also say. Some of the creative aspects I learned from my man Don Morris and Evan Gubernick, they showed me how to take words that we write as editors and make them look pretty and kind of visualize where they would be on the page and what words made emphasis, what colors would could help with your with your photos, how photos can tell the story better and enhance your words. It was so many people, man. I, I, I'm just so indebted to. Uh, you, again, we, we've had this, this incredible conversation, so much stuff that I prepared for, but so much more that you wow, enlightened Thank me you. on. Um, and I didn't know about parts of your story in a way. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.